So to start off, um, people are asking on Twitter, so I'm asking you now. Oh, um, blame it on Twitter. I like yeah. that. It's a, it's a good start to, a, yeah. to an interview. And we also want to know, so that's So fine. Twitter was wondering. <laughs> what kind of um, underwear do you so wear? So in your panel today with Robin Rich, yes. you said you'd be back on Supernatural. That's true. Is that serious or is that a joke? That's serious on my behalf. Okay. If they call me, I'm I tweeted right back about to it and show. people told me to delete it, so. I mean, I like to start a little bit of shit every now and then. It's <laughs> okay. good. It's what keeps the entertainment business going. Has anybody from Supernatural called me and invited me back? No. Am I going back in my mind? Absolutely. Okay. It's going to be fantastic when I get the phone call. Though. <laughs> Probably. Cement it. And I hope so. Stop spreading rumors. Um, so, about Supernatural as well. Um, what do you think about Michael possibly being the big bad um, this season? Um, and since it is an alternate universe, Michael, if your version of Michael met that Michael, what do you think he would say to him? It would be a good day on the set of Supernatural if my version of Michael met new ab abtastic Mike oh Michael. Um, yeah, look, I want to uh, have that face off. I really do. I, a fan pitched that to me as soon as the new, what's his name? I'm so bad. It's the new Michael. Great. You guys are the yep. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So new Michael, um, not Jake Abel, not Matt Cohen, the other Michael, is uh, he's fantastic. He's doing whatever he does, but I'm Michael. Not Jake, and not the new guy. That's just how I feel about it. I am. I am. I'm very. Uh, you know that character means a lot to me. I, mm -hmm. I introduced that character and made that character, and they've done great things with that character. But my, Michael was was freedom for me. It really was. He 100% was. I, there's no rules to playing the angel, and, and you know you get to live in that world for a second. It's spectacular. So yes, the face-offs of the Michael. If I knew your name, new Michael, I'd be saying it right now, but I don't. And I'm going to apologize for that. You're doing a great job. Next question. Um, so when we last spoke, we asked you about your posts on social media with hashtag you. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people um, look up to it as a source of positivity every day. Um, so what is something you do to keep yourself positive? That. I mean, hashtag you. It's so, I, I tell this story all the time. I, I if, feel like it's repetitive, but uh, to say it again, like hashtag you started uh, as selfish as something could start. I was in a dark place in my life, couldn't kind of get myself out of it. So I decided that every, you know, I had to start this Instagram thing. You know, I didn't have a bunch of followers or anything at the time, so I didn't know uh, the weight of the importance of any of it or how it would turn out. But I, I wanted to inspire myself every day if I could have a place to turn to and a person to talk to, that's where the hashtag you came from. So when I would look at my phone and open my Instagram account, I would see a message to me, taking it like all the fans take it to them, each one of them. And it helped me a lot. You know, I, you move to Hollywood and you, you sit in a room for the first year of your life and don't have conversations and just pray that you can get over your nerves enough to deliver a line of dialogue in a room. And then you, it goes bad for a long time and you, you don't want to socialize because you constantly feel like you can't cut it and you get, you drive yourself, not just in the entertainment business, but in all businesses, we let the situations around us decide if we're happy or not. When there's only one person that can change our ability to be happy, that's us, right? We can right now, I can start crying or I can just smile and laugh <laughs> and I'm happy and it doesn't matter what's going on. My best friend died, or my dog died, or I crashed my car, or I lost my house. Like if you physically force happiness into your body, it can be delivered. It's just that simple. And so that's hashtag you became my way to force it into my life and force it into other people's lives. And you know, it worked. You know, awesome. I'm not on antidepressants, so way to go, man. <laughs> um, so I'll try not to hit the table like this. <laughs> Um, so you told us in a previous interview that you had a butterfly garden. I do. And that seemed to be something that not a lot of people knew about you. So um, are there any other hobbies or interests that you have that you haven't told us about or that people might be surprised to know? Um, man, yes. I have interests in everything. Uh, I, you know, I have an a infatuation with boxing, which I've kind of stepped away from a little bit in the last two years just because of, you know, between work and trying to grow a family, you you know, obviously put priorities where they need to be, but I'm infatuated with boxing. Uh, I say to anybody who ever asks, if I had another job, I would try, not that I would be good at it, but I would try and give all my heart to some sort of professional fighting career because there's no more honest place to live your life. You, I think fighting is the closest thing to acting I've 
ever seen on a sports level. You stand in a ring across from a man and you must react to what they do. You know, you must react to every single thing they say, just like that. You know what I'm saying? That is the best type of acting you do is when you're listening to what I'm saying and you react. And so it's the same thing with boxing. If somebody throws a punch, you don't have time to go, oh, what should I do about this punch? You must just react in that moment. And it's beautiful and there's no hiding from it. Like there's no hiding from a camera. You put your face on screen, you learn your dialogue, you deliver this scene, and if you're bad, you suck on TV. And then you don't work anymore. That's just what it is. You can't be dishonest about it. I mean, you can get by for a little while, but your career won't, you know, it won't be that enjoyable if you're not, <laughs> not bringing some honest emotion to it. Um, so we often see videos and stuff of you and your son watching or listening to music from Moana. True. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so in the spirit of being in Orlando next to Disney, um, what was your favorite Disney movie growing up? I was a big Fantasia. I remember like now with my son turning on Fantasia and I, I have these like weird memories of going way, way back and seeing that same imagery as a child. I, you know, I don't know if that's the memory I, I held on to. I do have a, uh, it's not Disney, but I, I, in my childhood room, in my, when I was a tiny little baby, I had a thing on the wall of Casper the Friendly Ghost. And uh, the original now is on, I think Amazon Prime has the original Casper the Friendly Ghost. You have to see it. It's a series. It's just awesome. And they've remade, you know, Christina Ricci made like a movie, Casper the Ghost. I'm talking early, but like it was probably like a 70s cartoon or an 80s yeah. cartoon that was still airing when I was born. And I... Uh, it's not Disney, but it was my thing. And I've recently been on eBay trying to find the same, this vintage cutout of this ghost. And it was almost made out of like this weird like, popcorn ceiling-y, you know, 80s <laughs> style art, whatever it was. Uh, but I want to find one for my, my kid's room. Awesome. But yeah, I was a big, I mean, I love Scooby-Doo. I love G.I. Joe and like all these things. They weren't all Disney. I wasn't, I didn't become really a Disney guy until later in life. And now I'm like, Obviously, I've worked for Disney, so I kind of have to say this. Just kidding. I love Disney so much. Um, no, I, I really do. I think what Disney's doing, I think Moana spoke to me for so many reasons because it was the first time in my uh, experience that Disney made the lead hero woman, not a princess, not a, a high-heeled, depending on a man, princess. And, I, you know, take that for what it's worth. The time was right for a female chief of a Disney movie. It just was what it was. It spoke to me. I felt inspired the same way when I watched Wonder Woman. Like, I watched that movie and I was in tears afterwards. I was like, I want to be that lady. Like, she was so beautiful and strong and just, it was just, you know, you're moved by what you're moved by. It is what it is. Moana moves me. <laughs> could call it, could be the rocks tattoos or his beautiful pecs as a, as a cartoon <laughs> character. I don't know. It could be Hey Hey the Chicken. Yes. You guys know about Hey, hey the Chicken? Yes. That's Solid the best character. part. <laughs> um, so what would you say then would be your favorite ride at either Disneyland or Disney World? Pirates. 100%. Without a doubt. I, my son's been at Disney two times now. I've tr drug him on to Pirates regretfully both times. Like He would be excited. He sees like the parrot in the front of Disneyland in the line. He's like, Dad, I'll go on this one. And then like two minutes into it, before it even starts, you're like in just the like Louisiana style like marsh, and he's like inside my armpit with his eyes closed, holding his breath, and he's like up in there. Like I like Macklin, it's okay. And then you know, you got the smoke coming down with the octopus face guy right there, and he just kinda wants to cry when he sees it. And I like talk him out of it, and I'm like, oh high five. And my thing has been to get him over his fear of rides that I probably shouldn't be taking him on yet. I'd say, let's scare this guy. I'm like, just around the corner, is a scary skeleton. So as the boat goes around the corner, I yell real loud and scare everybody else in the boat. But I'm like, boom! And then he starts cracking up because they all jump. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I meant to scare the inanimate object or whatever that wasn't going to have a reaction at all. But you figure it out, you know? I don't know. It's Pirates is my favorite ride, so my kid's going to have to suck it up. <laughs> Macklin, if you ever see this, I apologize for the torture. Um, so how has becoming a parent made you see the world differently? It's just a, everything matters 
so much more. Every decision that I make, the way I wake up, the amount of minutes I spend from the getting out of bed to brushing my teeth to getting in the car, or the amount of minutes I'm gonna get back to seeing my kid. It's every decision I make in public towards other people, how they perceive me. I don't want them to get angry at me. I don't want to get into a confrontation where God forbid something happens to my life or their life and I get a rent. You know, anything, just everything, the weight of everything. And so you essentially, I, me personally, have detached myself from like public more because I'm just frightened. I'm frightened at the chaos of it all. I just want to sit in the backyard and like drink a cup of coffee and watch my kids' hair grow. You know, like it's, it's, there, there's nothing outside of my house that I care to see without the people that are inside my house, you know? So it's, that's just it. Everything outside my house is a way for me to get, a means for me to get back to my house and be with those people that I love so much. Um, so what are you kind of nerding out on right now? Butterflies. <laughs> a massive butterfly person and my wife, you deserve all the credit, Mandy. Mandy Musgrave, my wife, is a butterfly breeder, essentially. She decided we're gonna bring a butterfly in and let a caterpillar turn into a thing so my son could see when he was like one and we're like, I don't know, maybe 10,000 butterflies in at this point. Wow. Seriously, right now, she will literally text me. We have six chrysalides hanging in my kitchen and they're all monarch chrysalides. They have a 2% chance of surviving in the wild for numerous reasons. They have a, a sole food source, which is milkweed. They can't eat anything else. They can't eat milkweed that's ever had a pesticide on it. So you have to track down organic milkweed in 2018, which is the era of the chemical, you know? Like we live in a land of chemicals. It's just, that's the life. But it's just interesting to see these little things uh, go from a, you know, a tiny worm the size of a hair in five days turns into the size of your pinky in five days turns into a beautiful green chrysalide with like a, what looks like a 24 karat gold rim around it. It's gorgeous. And then a few days later, you have a monarch butterfly flying around your house, like just lands on your shoulder. It's the closest thing to fairy dust and magic that I've ever been a part of. It's fantastic. And the thing is, we don't want to accept it. We don't want to think that the world's magical. There's these little butterflies, maybe have little brains and think about crazy little stories, but that's the world I want to live in. I want to think that that thing is magical and, you know, my taxes and bills don't exist. That's the world I want to live in. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, look like this on the outside and keep getting grayer and, and more wrinkly, but I will always let the child dance in my heart. Like that is what it is. I'm never going to grow up. I'm never going to stop making stupid faces and pictures. I'm never going to stop dancing terribly. Like I'm always going to be this. This is finally me for the first time ever. It's great. Awesome. I mean, it's not great. I mean, it's, it's great for me. I don't know how the rest of the world perceives it, but it's going, going all right so far. Is it? No, hold on, we're almost done. Okay. Why'd you look at my dad before you no, asked no, me this I next heard question? Like that, no, I heard like that random oh. music going, and I was like, what is oh, that? Oh yeah, the background music for the rest of this video will be uh, dedicated and donated by Chris Schmelke in the room next to us, because he has no decibel control in his ears. He likes it just blaringly loud. Okay, so um, we just recently did an interview with Loud and Swain and Jason Mance. So we asked them sort of a series of questions that are a little fast paced. Oh, hit me. I love it like this. Okay. I'm so not going to tell you the answer is going to make sense. These are kind of the ones from like inside the actor's studio, <clears throat> edited a little bit. Okay. So what is your favorite word? <sighs> Peach. What is your least favorite word? Can't. What is your favorite curse word? It's the same as my favorite word that I don't want to say earlier, C U N T. I apologize. I don't say it out loud. It's just my favorite word in my mind. Don't say it out loud. My English buddies make it sound so good, and it's endearing when they say that word. It really is. You guys will see. In America, it's a bad word. In England, it's a term of endearment. Um, what sound or noise do you hate? Um, <laughs> complaints from any mouth in the world. Um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I would love to, uh, if I could go back to college and get a degree in something, I'd love to get a degree in agriculture, farming and growing your crops and self-sustainability and stuff like that. Okay. Um, what is one profession that you would not like to do? 
all of them besides what I'm doing. I don't ever want to work a real job. Ever. All right, last question. So if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Rob had fun with this one. It's not your turn yet. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get real old, real old before I go and knock on any gates and ask for entry anywhere. All right, we're good. You want to say bye? Bye. Where is this going to be? No, this is on the website, right? Yeah, it'll be on the website. It'll be on Twitter. All right. Well, while I have this moment, I just want to send all my love to the to the Supernatural fans and the General Hospital fans and the, the lovely ladies of Nerds and Beyond. Um, honored to have you guys interview me. Thank, Thank you so much. You.